Hey everybody, welcome back to Greed. Okay, let's keep playing. Although, man, uh, right after I stopped filming, Jem came out of her studio and we had lunch and I have totally forgotten, but I'm sure we just handed over cards, so let's go on ahead and start again. So I gotta pick a card, play a card, hand them over. Let's see, and no, now I know this is gonna be the turn that I play an action so that I can double it. And I've got my sucker convention. Are there any better actions I could do to double instead? Like it'd be awesome to do this smuggling because I'd, I'd be able to double it and get 50,000 instead of the 60,000, but I don't have to give Jen 10,000. I'm not crazy about giving Jen 10,000, but to do this, I need a car and a bottle, you know, some booze, and I don't have either of those things. Although Eugene, I mean, heck, I don't know, I've kind of lost track. Eugene might be the only source of a car in this whole game. He might be the only dude with a car. So maybe I want to grab him so later on I could do smuggling. Because I think, like right here, here's a, a, a bottle. So, you know, these three things combined is a very nice combo. But who knows if I'll be able to get all of them. And I, also, Eugene, if I play him, I'll have to give up a card. But after Pete's done, I don't need him to stick around anyway. So I don't mind basically sacrificing him to get Eugene out. Because then I'd have a car, which I could use for in a smuggling operation, etc., etc. So that's pretty nice. But still, the original question was, is there better, let's see, arson? Each opponent loses 10,000. Jen doesn't have any money yet. <sighs> it would be awesome to double this streetwalkers, which I'm eventually hoping to do. But I won't do that. I won't play this until I've got a bunch of holdings. Gain 10,000. When an adjacent player plays a thug, gain 10,000 more. Hmm. So this is kind of nice. Although, let's see. Right. If I could do this when I know Jen is going to do a thug, because this basically, when I play an action, I get to bring it back into my hand. That's kind of cool. Oh, the complex scheme. Basically, next turn, any time you play a holding, place three markers on it, that's 30,000 bucks. But I need a key and a wrench to do that. So, but I've got a key off of Pete. But if I sacrifice Pete to play Eugene, I'll lose that key, so I can't do a complex scheme, which is awesome, because if I do the complex scheme, I mean, I can, I can get 30000 off of this thing. Hmm. And let's see, relocate. To, uh, put a holding back into your hand. So I basically can't, uh, cancel holding, but then I could play it again later, and next turn, any time you play a holding, place as many extra markers on as we're on the holding. Wow, so this plus the concept, this doubles the output of the complex scheme. Wow, these are an awesome bonus. But it requires a key. So if I go for this car thing, I give up Pete, so I'm, not, I'm gonna try and go for this. And I'm gonna need both these cars, and I don't, or cars, I don't know if Jen's gonna take one. But I don't know if I can get a wrench yet. There's no other wrenches in this hand, is there? But chances are there's some wrenches over here. Oh, there's a, in the, in the car. But I don't know if I can get two keys to get the thieves out. Oh. Hmm. Well, I know this relocate's going to be good no matter what. I'm going to take this. All right. And so then everything else goes back into Jen's hand. Uh, hopefully, I'll get the complex. If I can confirm there's a wrench somewhere, I'll be able to get that and use the complex game. So these are going to go to Jen. And now what am I going to play? I'm going to play the sucker convention. And now Jen, she knows with a high degree of confidence I'm going to play an action. But I don't think that affects her. See, it's interesting. It was perfectly reasonable for Jen to play Bobby right up front because it's a really common opening move to play a card that gets some money. And you can never be sure what a player is going to play, so there's a high chance. And honestly, I would have played a getting card money if I hadn't had Pete, who doubles my getting money thing. Anyway, though, so now what is Jen going to play? Let's see here. Right now, she wants guns because that really helps uh, Ed, and she needs to get her guns into play first before she plays Ed so that she can get the most money off of him. Let's see. So all these cards. Da da da. All right. So now she's already got a gun, so she could do a heist because she needs to gain five thousand for each thug. So this is be kind of good after she's played. She's close because then they, they both got guns. <clears throat> Let's see. There's these two things that need keys, and Jen doesn't know if she could get a key ever. There's now Jen could go for this. This would be kind of nice. This would give her a chance to maybe get more flexibility with a thug. And Jen knows she does not want to go heavy into. She wants me to go heavy into holdings because she's going to plan that raid later on. So she doesn't want to do any of these if she can avoid it. Um. Let's see. And one last heist, gain 5,000 for each thug. 
So if she could do this, she knows she wants to have more thugs as well. So maybe she should, yeah, she's going to take this so she'll be able to get another thug because this will be a thug that's in play. Plus she'll get another thug that maybe will give her an icon she needs. So that's what she's going to take. All right. And so she hands me the rest of these cards and now she's got to pick what card is she going to play? She, okay. And she's going to play Patricia because both of these are later in the game cards. Okay, and so now we both we both play our cards. My sucker convention, Patricia, 53, 34. So the sucker convention goes first. I get 30,000 bucks, 25, 30. I'm rich, rich, I tell you. But Jen also gets 10,000. So Jen just made some money as well. Jen didn't see that coming, so she's quite happy about that. And now, when you play an action, return it to your hand. So this is gonna come back into my hand. Boom, so I'll get to do it again. And Jen sees that. So Jen knows I'm going to play this again. Jen knows she's got another 10K coming. And now I'm just going to tap him as a reminder that his special power doesn't activate anymore. I say, now Jen, so she's doing Patricia. Turn over cards from the draw pile till you find a thug. Play it, ignoring the cost of these. And Jen's hoping for a really expensive thug. All right, that's an action. That's a holding, a holding, a holding, a action, a holding. A th Ooh, gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous Jenny Jones. All right. And... Ah, what a bummer. See, Jen was really hoping to find a thug that would have cost or needs because Jen would get to play for three. Jenny has no cost or needs. Um, neither does Harvey or let's see if she can find one. Wow, so, you know, bad bit of luck. There were no expensive thugs coming in Jen's life. But anyway, so, but anyway, Jen gets to immediately play Je generous Jenny Jones for free and she gets an additional 20,000. So that's not bad news. So Patricia called up Jenny. Jenny showed up. But now here's the interesting thing. about Oh, and Jenny is another gun, which Jen likes. Here's the problem with Jenny, though. At the end of the game, if Jenny is still around, Jenny is going to want, you know, Jenny is generous. She gave up 20000 At the end of the game, she's going to want 25000 back. So you lose 5000 So before the end of the game, Jen is going to have to find a way to get rid of generous Jenny Jones because she doesn't want to have to pay off that twenty five grand. But in the meantime, she made twenty. So she's still pretty happy with that. All right. So that was that. Jen's made some money. I made some money. I'm going to tap Pete because I still got him. He still counts towards having a key and a thug. I just don't get to do, use his next turn of pow pow power anymore. All right. And so now we move on to the next round. Let's say, oh, wait, and um, you know, uh, discard all other cards that you revealed right. So these are all discarded, basically. All right. Anyway, though. so next turn. What do I got here? Some holdings. And I want to start getting holdings out. Um, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. I want to start getting holdings out. Because I'm still planning on getting that streetwalker that improves all of the holdings I've got. Let's see. Museum heist. And, and hey, here's my sucker convention again. Now I'm inclined to actually set this aside because if I don't, Jen will end up grabbing it. But what does that mean I'm not picking up? Well, it doesn't matter. I got to get the sucker convention again because this is a 20K thing for free. So I got to have that. All right. So that means all of these are going back to Jen. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And so Jen, what has she got? Okay. Ba ba ba. Da 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 da. Um. <laughs> oh. You know. Oh. Hey. You know what? Remember how Jen has to get rid of gorgeous, gen generous Jenny Jones? Eugene will take care of that problem for her. So I think Jen is going to grab Eugene. All right, and so then she's going to hand all this stuff over here to me. Now, we each have to play a card. I'm going to play the sucker convention again. And Jen, well, there's no, she doesn't want to do the raid yet. She doesn't want to do cheesecloth. So I think Jen is going to play Eugene. Because, yeah, all right, so that's what Jen's playing. All right, here we go. We reveal at the same time. Sucker convention is 34. Eugene is 71. I go first. I get 30,000 more. And Jen, unfortunately, gets 10,000 more. And now this is out of the game. It's not gonna, normally when you do actions, they're just out of the game. Jen, she's gonna play Eugene. She has to pay, somebody gets whacked to make room for Eugene. And I believe that will be poor, generous Jenny Jones. And so Jen does not have to repay her debts to Jenny. And now she's got a car and a gun and Patricia, who doesn't really do anything, but isn't hurting anything either way. So that was that. Um, we played our cards. We've got our new hands. Let's keep going, all righty. Now then, oh, I totally forgot about my complex scheme. The wrench, the wrench, the wrench. Is there a wrench? There's this wrench in the thieves' house, but there's, 
I don't think there's any more keys. I don't think this thieves house will ever be able to be played because there are no more keys. And Jen grabbed Patricia, so I'm not gonna be able to try and pull another character out to get another key. So this is dead weight, this is useless. Which means I can't get this wrench. Which means I might not be able to do the complex scheme with this key. And I don't really remember, are there any other wrenches? I don't remember anymore. Well, I'll have to come back to that. But anyway, so I still don't know about the complex scheme. I'm gonna put that off to the side. Um, let's see here. Arson, each opponent loses 10K for each thug you have. I only have one thug, so that's not really that great. Shakedown, 10, gain 10K, and um, when an opponent plays a thug, gain 10K more. All right, but that's only going to be if that happens this turn. And I don't know if Jen's going to play a thug this turn. She just played a thug. I don't know if she's going to do it again. Here's my streetwalkers, though. You know what? Um, I think I'm going to go on ahead and grab them. Yeah. Because I don't want Jen to take them. Because, you know, ultimately I'm going to start building holes. Although I haven't done it yet. So anyway, I'm going to take that. And so these go over to Jen. Let's see what Jen's going to take. All right, and I'm going to play. I am going to play... Trotsky's Burlesque. I'm going to get that into play now. And so what is Jen going to do? Let's see here. <clears throat> so many cards. Okay. So Jen's got some money. She could put this parlor into play. And see, this is the source of the other heart. Now, the thing is, has Jen been paying attention to that? Probably not. She's had a couple opportunities, so I don't think she's going to grab that. Okay, or actually, well, is there anything else she wants to grab? She's got a car, and she's got a gun, but she doesn't have a key, so she doesn't know if she can pull off this heist. And like me, she doesn't think this heist is probably no good because there's no more keys in the game. So that's kind of out. The bookie joint gives uh, Patty's Pub, place an extra marker on this for every car you have. Jen's got a car, so Patty's Pub takes good advantage. But Jen knows I don't have a car, so she figures I'm probably not going to grab this anytime soon, so she can wait till later to get it if she wants to. To pay 10000 to get the bookie joint. Now, why was it? Jen, I think Jen wanted to have at least one holding because she was going to have to sacrifice a holding to get something. But that was in the other hand, and I don't remember it anymore. Ah, so much to keep. Place a marker on each of your holdings with more than one marker. At the end of each turn, each opponent loses a thug. Right? A holding. Right. Right. No, but Jen doesn't want to do holding. She wants me to do holding. So she's got to do something else so that she's hoping that I will do holding so she can raid them. So one last heist. Well, Jen can definitely do this. She's got the gun. She doesn't have the key. Take care of business. Play. Anyway, she has, so I think she's going to take the one last heist. All right. So she gives these back to me. Now, we each have to play a card. I've already chosen one I'm playing. Jen's got to play a card. Um, now, she's got one, two, three guns out. Four. So she would get 20000 now right off the bat for cheesecloth here, playing him now. Maybe now's a good time to play him. There's no more cards. She's not handing any more gun cards away. So I think, yeah, it's time to bring out cheesecloth. All right. So there we go. Everybody's done. We reveal. All right. 19 versus 23. I go first. And this cost me 15,000. So I just lost 15,000 points. Let's see. Uh, all right. Put it, put it back at 25. Get a 10. But now, each turn, if one player has the most hearts, that player gets 5,000. 5, and Jen sees that and she's like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. And, and, she, and she just handed me back the heart. So that's going to hurt her. She should have paid more attention. All right. So, um, and right now, so Jen, she revealed cheesecloth. Now, so Jen, I have more hearts. So I just make 5,000 instantly off of this. This is going to be awesome. All right. So anyway, so Jen now, she's got cheesecloth. She played it. It's a one-time thing. It didn't cost her anything. Get 10, 5,000 for each gun. One, two, three. Oh, it's only three. So it's 15,000. I miscounted. But Jen just made 15,000 off of that dude. All right. So all she's got is a bunch of thugs. But remember, um, right. On your next turn, each player, including you, loses a thug they choose. Right. Okay. Ah, shoot. All right. Anyway, so that was that. And now we go on to the next round. So I've got all these things. What am I going to do? Well, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to take this parlor because I don't want Jen to get this heart because then I wouldn't have majority on love. So let's take all. Although, remember, I want to get that, that wrench so that I could do that. All right, anyway, so that's going to go over to Jen. What's Jen going to do? Okay. She's got to take one of these. She never got a chance to get, oh, this is what it was. She was waiting on, because this would have been 10,000 more. She had to give up a, well, it's too late for that now. 
Gain 5,000 for, for each marker has the most holdings. Yeah, thieves can't do that. Complex scheme. Now Jen, oh, Jen's got a key. Jen can do a comp, let's see, if she gets a wrench, she can do a complex scheme. Nice. Um, and she has one key, but I've got the only other key. So we can't, she can't do this. She's gonna go for this complex scheme. She's gonna go for, so she has a car. Oh, these are both things she could potentially do. And um, gain 10,000. When an adjacent player plays a thug, gain 10,000 more. Gain 25,000. Each opponent loses 10,000. For each thug you have, Jen's got four thugs. Oh my gosh, I think Jen's gonna partake in some arson. Wow. But now Jen's gotta remember, she's got the key. She needs a wrench. And she, she's got a car, she, she wants, if she can find it, she wants to find a wrench, but she can't do this unless she doesn't have another key. She wants to find a wrench and a wine bottle because if those things come back, she could do them. So anyway, so that's that. So we've each chosen our cards and now I am going to put into play my um, absinthe. Cost me 10 grand, but I'm just gonna get it done. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Whenever you play a holding, totally forgot this. I played, this is the first holding I played. You put an investment marker on it for every icon it's got and for every matching icon on the board. Now, I don't have any other matching icons, but if I had other arts out, I'd get another one for the matching heart icons. I believe that's how it works. Let me double check this. This is the most complex thing of the game. Um, right, holdings, there we go. To the rules. All right, each time a holding card is played, developer markers are placed on immediately. One marker for each icon, so that I got one for that. Uh, and furthermore, one marker for each of these icons on other cards that players display every time they appear. So. I'm gonna get out the absinthe, and that's gonna be nice. There's gonna be some, some uh, cross-pollinization between these two. And so Jen, I believe she, she's got four thugs. It's time to do some arson. All right, so we've both taken, we've handed the cards over, we're gonna play. 14, so Jen goes first. She puts out the parlor. Now this has two icons on it, so it gets two. That's, that is 20,000 bucks right there. Now this costs 10,000. So here goes 10,000, but I made 20. And I look around, I have another heart over here, so I make another 10,000. If I could have waited until I had more bottles, I could have made even more. But, so I made quite a bit of investment. I've got 40,000 bucks sitting here in addition to what I've got in the bank. Okay, so I play that and now Jen is gonna play some arson. Each opponent loses 10,000 for each thug they have. Oh, each thug they have! Oh, I read that wrong. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So, oh, uh, that's too bad. Well, should Jenna play something else then? Each opponent removes a marker from each of their holdings. So I'd lose 20,000 if Jen played this now, but she wants to wait till I have more. One last heist, I could do this. Uh, gain 5,000 for each thug the player with the most thugs has. Uh, yeah, you know what, Jen's gonna do this one instead. She's gonna do one last heist, which is still a higher number. So gain 5,000 for each thug the player with the most thugs has. That's Jen, she's got four, so that's 20,000. Boom. Boom. Now at the end of the next turn, each player, including you, chooses a thug um, to lose. So we're both going to lose one thug next round. Um, oh, that's interesting. That means Jen's going to, I'm going to lose my only thug, which means Jen will not be able to hurt me with arson because I have no thugs. Oh, no. Oh, well, say lovey. All right, so anyway, so Jen did one last heist. She needed the gun for it, so that was fine. Meanwhile, I just invested in some real estate, and now let's go to our next hand. What are we gonna do? Oh, things are getting so complicated. Okay. Still, this thieves house, no one can do it. Um. <clears throat> oh, now this is interesting. Peeping Tom Thumb. Now, Jen would have to give up. Oh, wait, oh, Jen's got this thing where this is the thing. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, wait a minute. I'm totally forgetting everything. So when Jen relocates, if she takes the, um, takes this, she'll put the absence back in her hand and she'll get to double all those. So she's going to want to relocate and then gain fit for each player with the most holding, for each marker the player with the most holdings has. Uh, complex scheme. You know what? I think I'm done chasing after icons. I'm just going to, all right, I'm, I gain 10,000. When the adjacent player gains, yeah, I don't know if Jen's going to play a thug. I think I'm just gonna go for the golden. I know I've got a lot of holdings. Gain 5,000 for each marker uh, the player with the most holdings has. But I have to give up a holding. I don't wanna give up holdings because this is making me money. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. I, last turn, Trotsky's made me 5,000 more because I have the most hearts. Gonna keep, I have to keep on remembering that. I just put that over here as a reminder, okay. So, I don't wanna give this to Jen because I didn't realize this, Jen could score off of my holdings. So I'm gonna take Peeping Tom Thumb here. 
Although I have to give up a holding. And I don't want to give up either of my holdings. Oh, shoot. Now, um, complex scheme. If I can get a wrench, gain 10,000 when I place. Um, gain. You know what? Jen, I know Jen is going to want to play this because it'll make her a lot of money because of mine. If I could time this shakedown at the same time she does that, I'm going to take the shakedown and hopefully I can play the same time she plays that. All right. So that's what I got. What's Jen going to pick? All right. And this goes away, by the way. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So now Jen was trying to remember. She wanted to set aside a bottle and a wrench. She needs those because those, uh, she, so she wants to grab both of those if she can. It's cost 10,000 at the end of the game, gain five for each uh, marker that's on this. Um, place an extra marker for each, you know what? Let's go with Patty's Pub. Jen's gonna take Patty's Pub because that's gonna get her this, which I don't remember what event it was, but it'll let her do one of them. But because since she has a car, she'll benefit from it. Okay, so she hands these back to me. Now we each have to play a card. Um, I'm not going to play this shakedown yet because I know Jen's going to maybe play that uh, Tom Cruise looking guy later. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to get my street walkers into play. Yes. All right. So I'm going to play that. And meanwhile, what is Jen going to play? <clears throat> Let's see. Each opponent loses 10K for each thug. Oh, wait. Oh, I had to keep this around because at the end of the next turn, each player has to lose a thug. Now, I know Jen's about to lose her thug. Or I'm, I'm sorry. Jen knows I'm about to lose my thug. So she better do arson now before I lose my thug. All right, so there we go. All right, okay, and that was there. And so these are back in our hands. So this is what we've done. We reveal street walkers. And right, so once again, I go first. Play, um, place a mark. So I needed hearts. I had hearts. Place a marker on each of your holdings. So I just made 20,000 more bucks. And this goes away. Um, and don't forget, I have the most hearts, so I'm also going to make 5,000 more from the burlesque parlor. Arson. Each opponent loses 10,000 for each thug they have. Jen hasn't lost her thug yet, so, or I mean, I'm sorry, I haven't lost my thug yet, so I just ended up losing 10,000 bucks due to some arson. Okay, and now at the end of the turn, that heist we all partook in, not everybody made it. Everybody has to sacrifice one thug, so I'll sacrifice my key guy, because I've kind of given up on it. And Jen will sacrifice uh, her because she doesn't do anything anyway. She has no icons. She already did her one ability. All right. And so I made my five. All right. So now we're on to the next one. We're getting close to the end, folks. Okay. Da, da, da. Oh, insurance office. I forgot. This is what it was. Since I knew this was coming, or since Jen knew this was coming, and she knew we were going to have to give up stuff, the insurance office, when you give up stuff, oh, so many things. So, ah, all right. What am I going to do? What am I going to take? I'm gotten the shakedown. I think I'm going to play the shakedown because I'm hoping Jen will play a thug this turn. And then later on, I'm going to relocate to double this money. But in the meantime, um, I could get the bookie joint, which is 10,000. At the end of the game, 5,000 for, um, for every extra marker that's on here. So this is cost 10,000, but it'll make 20,000 because I'm going to get two on here. So that's pretty nice. The insurance office, when you lose a thug or another holding. Now, I don't think pulling one back to my hand counts as losing. But Jen might hit me again. This has no icons. Museum heist. I, I, I've given up on this. I don't have a car. Take care of business. Each mar, um, yeah, place a marker on each of your holdings with no more than one marker. Oh. So if I take care of business and I, wow. Okay, I'm going to take the bookie joint because that plus take care of business, if I can get take care of business later, will be quite nice. All right, so the rest of these go back to Jen. And now what is Jen going to hold on to? Right. So now Jen got her bottle which means she's going to build the thief house. No, no, no. What was it? The bottle. Oh, yeah, the smuggling operation. She's going to take that because she can actually pull it off. Okay, so she hands these back to me. We each have to pick a card to play. I'm going to go on ahead at the end of the game, gain one. Yeah, I'm going to, put, I'm going to play my bookie joint. And Jen, um, right, so she can play any of these now. All right, she's got to get the bottle out before she has to have the the liquor before she can do the smug. She has to have you know the source of liquor before she can start smuggling stuff. So I think she's going to get Patty's Pub out. There we go. All right, so we both reveal number seven versus number fifteen. Jen, I, I go first. So cost me ten k. All right, and I get one marker because. Yeah, there's one icon on it, but there's no matching wrenches, so I only get the one marker. And now at the end of the game, if I can get any more markers on here, it'll be they'll they'll be worth uh, 
you know, addition, at the end of the game, gain an additional 5K. So I want to get more markers on there before it's over. Meanwhile, Jen launched Patty's Pub, which costs nothing. It was totally free. And it adds, she gets, this is her first uh, place. She gets something. There are no more bottles. So she just made 10,000 for that. Oh, place an extra marker if you have a, so Jen just made an extra 10,000 because Eugene, with his car, likes to hang out at Patty's Pub, I guess. All right, so down to three cards, folks. The game is almost over. Um, and I and Jen did not take the peeping Tom. And so now there's this complex scheme. I've got a wrench now. I'm going to take the complex scheme. Give these back. Okay. Why are there an odd number of cards? Why did... Oh, because there was an extra card added. Right. All right. Anyway. So, insurance office. Uh, what is Jen going to take? And ba -ba -ba. take care of business. Uh, place a marker on each of your holdings with no more than one marker. This has two markers, so it's no good for taking care of business. Museum heist. Jen can't. Uh, Jen can do this. She's got a gun, and a car, and a key because of. All right, so Jen's doing a museum heist. Nice. She's gonna hand these back to me. Now we each have to play a card. Can I do my complex scheme? Um, I've got. Oh no! The key. Oh, Pete, I got rid of Pete. I can't do a complex scheme. Oh, that was so dumb. Well, you know, the important thing is I can see, well, uh, I shouldn't have taken that. What should I have taken instead? That was dumb. Since I have no key, I don't have a, I do have a bottle and so I should take the thieves. No, I, I, it generates, I don't have keys. So I'm gonna take Peeping Tom Thumb because I can't play either of those other cards. So that's what I'm taking. And of these things, I will, Oh, but to play this means I have to give up one of, so I have to, for each marker, the holding with the most has. So I'll get 5,000, so I'll get half the value of these things. Now nah, I'll keep me away. I'll worry about that later. All right. So anyway, so I got to pick a card to play. I'm not going to play this because I want to get rid of any of my locations yet. Shakedown. Gain 10, place 10,000 when an adjacent player plays a thug. Oh, but if, I'm hoping Jen plays this. All right, I am going to take back my, no, no, no. Right, but if I don't, if Jen doesn't take that. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll just take this event. All right. Particularly because Jen can do it, can't she? She has a key. No, she doesn't have a wrench, so she can't do it either, but I'll take it anyway. All right. I'll stick with my original dumbass movement. <sighs> so, is it time to relocate or when a Jason player plays suck? Now, Jen hasn't gotten her thug yet, so she hasn't done yet, so because right, I'm going to play, I'm going to relocate now. So, right, I'm going to relocate, put this face down. Jen, she's got three cards, she's got to play one. And I think it is time for her to do the museum heist. Okay, so there we go. We reveal 41 versus 30. So Jen goes first. She proves that she has a car and a gun and a key, so she's pulled it off. She just made 25 grand. Boom. Relocate. I have to, I have to give up one of my buildings, put that back into my hand, and next turn, anytime you play a holding, place as many extra markers on it as were on the holding you paid plus two. Now, I think I understand this, because I think this means it doubles it. Let me double check this, because I haven't played this one before. All right, so cost. Give up a holding. Put it back in my hand. Next time, next turn, so next turn, anytime you play a holding, place on it as many extra markers as were on the holding card you paid. This is like plus two, right. So that means I'm gonna take the absinthe parlor back into my hand. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna relocate. It costs me a place to pay it. So, but instead of discarding it, I take it back into my hand. And this was the money that was on it. So I'm gonna put this here as a reminder. I'm gonna put all that plus two so the next time I do a holding, I'll, you know, so that's really, really nice. Next turn, anytime you play a holding, place on it as many extra markers as were on the holding you paid. There were four plus two, so that's going to be nice for next turn. So i got to keep this around to remind next turn I'm going to, right. Uh, so that means next turn I have to play. Okay, so let's look at our hands. What are we going to keep? Well, gee, of all these cards, I think I'm going to take the, uh, the parlor and give these over to Jen. Jen's got two more cards left. What's it going to be? Now, she can't play, the, so I think she will take Peeping Tom Thumb. Okay, and so she hands this back to me. Now, where the game is almost over, there is only, oh, wow, yeah, only one card left. Okay, uh, but, you know, so we're almost done. 
So anyway, now we both have to play a card. I'm gonna bring back, oh, but here's the thing. J this now might be the time that Jen is gonna bring out the Tom Thumb. If she's ever gonna do it, now would be the time. So I play the shakedown to make 10,000 plus an additional 10,000 when John Jen plays Tom Thumb. But for all I know, she's gonna do something else. And I'm running out of time, do I put that? Well, I got time, I can still put the part out there. So I'm gonna try and do a shakedown and hopefully Jen plays um, the Tom Cruise card. What is Jen gonna play? Now she can do the smuggling because she has a car and a wine bottle. She's got this. But see, I don't know if she wants to play this now because she'll be giving up $20,000 to do it. So I think she's going to do smuggling. Okay. So that's it. We reveal. I did a shakedown. Jen did, and I didn't shake her down. She didn't play a thug. All right. So 32, 3. So I go first. I make 10,000 bucks. So that's still nice anyway. And when an adjacent player plays a thug this turn, get 10,000 more. I didn't get 10,000 more because Jen, she did smuggling. She had the car. She had the booze. So she's going to smuggle that and make 25 grand. Aye, aye, aye. Jen's got a big pile of money. I don't have a big pile of money. This is getting scary. Okay. So. Now, we each have, now because there were some extra cards added to the game, and I might have screwed up at some point, Jen's got three cards to choose from to take her last card. I get to take one more card. This is the last card. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna play one more card. Jen's gonna take one of these and play one more card. Um, right, and Jen's planning on raiding to raid all of, you know, to make me lose a bunch of stuff. So it doesn't really matter what she takes. Uh, place a marker on each of your holdings. She only has one marker. That's 10,000. At the end of the next turn, opponent loses a thug. Uh, is that right? Um, right. So Jen's definitely going to, doesn't matter what she takes, she'll take that. And so these are gone. And I took the only one I can get. Now, this is the final card, the final card we're going to play. Um, right. I already did my shakedown. That's gone. Now, I have to play the parlor because I want to get all this money back. Because all I'm doing is relocating the parlor. So these cards never got played. Jen's got one more card to play. Tom Thumb would get 5,000 for each marker the holding with the most has. <gasps> wow. Oh, now that's really interesting. This is, this is gonna, this could be, um, what is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. This could be 30 grand right here. But I don't know what the number is. If Jen plays later, it would only be 10 grand. Whereas this is a guaranteed, if I'm, I'm gonna assume, this is a guaranteed 30 grand. This is a maybe 30 grand. So I am, Jen has been holding on to this the whole game. At the end of the game, she's going to call in the cops and do a raid. Or not to call in the cops. Right. So we play these last two. 14.59. So this cost me 10K. But it gets two icons on it. Because it has two. Plus a matching heart. So that's another one. Plus all the stuff from relocation. That. That's it, folks. That's my biggie. And now Jen, she did a raid. Each opponent removes a marker from each of their holdings. So that's 10, 20, 30,000 bucks I just lost in that last turn. Oh my gosh, the game is over. Now let's tally up. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 90 um, plus 30, that is 120 grand I have made. Let's look at Jen. She's got, oh crap, I forgot. I forgot at least twice to get my 5,000 uh, because I'm sure I, I kept forgetting to do that. So let's say I had another, so that was 120, 130 grand. All right, so let's look at Jen's. She's got tw um, 20, uh, let's see, that's uh, 50, that's 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, 145 versus 130, and maybe a little bit more because I kept forgetting to do the burlesque haul. So I, I probably should have a bunch more because I, I think I've forgotten it. You, you folks can tell me. But even still, even if I have like a, a couple more, this was a pretty close game. I'm not quite sure who won because I kept forgetting the burlesque haul and the 5,000 I should have been making every single turn. But Jen, she, she had a lot of a big lucrative heist. She made a lot of money and Patty's Pub brought in a little. Me, I engaged it. I basically built a red... Uh, you know, when I relocated, I had to relocate my um, absinthe parlor over next to the burlesque show. I made a very not particularly nice part of town, um, plus the bookie joint right next door. So I made most of my money on my holdings. And because I, I lost track of the burlesque, I don't know how much money I made. But still, folks, hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what greed is all about. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button in five, four, three, two, one.